been a long day and I, like many of you, were probably rushing home to get to where you needed to be tonight. I can totally relate tonight. Now, that all being said, I'm Coach Red, hello. And I'm your parenting coach and I'm not perfect either. When I was a, uh, a young mother and I had young children, I yelled a lot. I was so stressed out half the time. I did not work full time, but I wasn't able to manage my time properly and I was running late to things and I, I was really yelling a lot. I wish I had the tools that redirecting children's behavior could have given me at that time, but instead I did the best I could with the tools that I had. So that being said, are you tired of telling your children what to do? I know that I had so many cases when they were growing up where I wish I just had like a magic bullet. There is no magic bullet. There is no magic pill. There is no magic. But if you follow these tips and these tools, there's a good chance that you will have harmony in your family and you won't be constantly telling your child what to do. Um, did you ever, you know, say to your kids, put away your coat, put away your coat, put, you know, how many times do you have to say that? Well, I'm here to tell you that you could say, where does your coat belong as an option? Why is it that it's better to ask your kids questions instead of just yelling at them randomly? Well, it helps our kids think. When we tell them what to do, our kids don't have, an, have to use their decision-making skills. They don't have to become decision-making people because they'll just tune us out. We'll yell, we'll yell, la, 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 like the Charlie Brown teacher but when you ask questions, it makes them pay attention and it makes them think. They can't tune us out when they have to think of an answer. So imagine being the child and your child begins, your parent begins to bark orders at you. Put your clothes away, clean up your room, set the table. Do your homework. We're having dinner. Come to dinner. What do you feel like doing? Do you want to even answer your parent who's yelling from another room or yelling from the table when she or he has a friend over and they're having dinner or they're having whatever adult conversation? Do you even want to respond to what your parent is saying? Just picture yourself in that position. You'd be annoyed too. Now imagine if your parent was saying to you, and you were the child again, in a very friendly tone of voice, hey, where do your clothes belong? Or where does rough housing play belong? Or, you know, what else could you be doing at this time while the adults are having a conversation? Just in a very friendly, matter of fact voice, not sarcastic. Hey, Serena, thanks for watching. Hi, Manny, thanks for watching. So, It'll, it, you know, you can learn different ways of speaking sometimes if you put yourself in your child's place also. So the second thing that asking questions of your kids would be to help them problem solve. So if your child spills, you could say, clean up that mess. Or you could say, what do you think you could do about this milk on the floor? Or while you're both cleaning up the spill. So how would you do this differently next time so that the milk doesn't spill? It makes them think and it makes them also not feel bad about what they've done, right? So the third thing is they're learning good judgment. So if your child answers, we can let the dog lick up the milk, then you can say, and who will get the germs off? How are we going to get the germs out the floor? It teaches them to think of good judgment and the cause and effect of what could happen next. Another thing is your child learns cooperation. There's a cooperation that occurs when you're asking questions more than when you're directing children. And they don't feel like 
cooperating when you're commanding them and demanding things of them. And last, your child will learn to take initiative. When you make demands, they feel small. They don't feel good. And they're not going to take the initiative. They're just going to wait for you to yell at them like you always do. And then they're going to do whatever, or they're not going to do whatever. When you ask the question, your child starts to take the initiative. So these are really good reasons to ask questions instead of barking orders at your parent, at your children. The next time you're tempted to bark a command, stop, think, and phrase it in a question, in a friendly tone of voice. And then take note of the response you get. And I think you'll all be really, really, really amazed. Just make sure not to put sarcasm into your tone of voice. Make it like curious, like, hmm, what would, what would it be like to do whatever? Or what, what else could you do when there's a mess like that? Um, yeah, and good point, Serena. Serena, in my comments down there, writes that you should go down on, or should you go down to their level? Like, you don't bark orders from a tall perspective, but maybe go down to their level and say, hmm. What do you think we should do about this mess that was just made? So good point, Serena. Thanks for bringing that up. Don't bark orders from a really high level. Just get down to their level if they're smaller children and talk to them just like matter of factly. Like, hey, where does your coat belong? So I want to give you a couple of things that you can phrase in a question um, and normally we would just bark these orders. I, I can totally relate. That's why I keep saying we. <laughs> so put your coat away could become, where does your coat belong? You can't leave your room until it's clean can become, what needs to happen before you can leave? So notice how my tone of voice is changing. Give that back to your sister now. How can you work this out so you can both win with this particular thing? Look at how sad you made your brother feel. How do you think your brother feels? Get your dad to help you with that. Or even go get your dad to help you with that. That's not a question. It's a nice way of speaking. But who could you ask for help with that? Don't even say you could ask this person. You could ask this person. Those are still directives. So... Leave these questions open-ended. Who could you ask for help with that particular thing? Or one more. Stop playing your game now. How many minutes do you need to complete the task in your game? And let the child tell you five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then hold them to it. All right, because you have an agreement. So these are your parenting tips for this evening. I hope you all have a great night if you want to hear more of these great tips, you can contact me on communication and parenting with Coach Red. You can also call me on, I mean, call me. You can also contact me on my website, www.coachred1.com. That's the number one.com. Please subscribe on my website so that you can get my blogs and all these great tips and information. And if you subscribe on my website, www.coachred1.com, of course. And I really look forward to hearing from all of you.